Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we've just done a little bit of a deep dive around the world of baseball, talking about some of the injury updates, including Christian Yelich, uh, Mookie Betts coming back, and Yoshi Yamamoto on an inevitable return for the playoffs for the Dodgers. We also talked a little bit about Drake May's preseason game we talked about his ups and his down he did get a rushing touchdown in a one-point loss to the Philadelphia Eagles the other night uh what that might mean as far as him being the starter in New England at the beginning of the season. In this segment, though, we are going to continue our t- coverage of the NFL, talk a little bit about the Los Angeles Chargers in our continuing series, going through all 32 NFL teams, taking a look at their offseason, giving them a grade, taking a look at their schedule, and giving them a record prediction. Before we get into that, though, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, All you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net, or if you are on YouTube, you can use the Super Chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to get into the Los Angeles Chargers. Their offseason was one filled with turmoil, right? They end up firing their coach, uh, Brandon Staley, after a disappointing 5-12 and season filled with lots of downs, not too many ups, whether that be injury, bad coaching decisions, bad breaks. He gets fired midway through the season. They bring in legendary coach at both the college level and the NFL level, Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh, who Everywhere he goes has been extremely successful. This is probably, I won't say his hardest, but definitely his hardest NFL assignment. When he was with the 49ers, he immediately led them to success, goes back down to the college ranks after a couple of hugely successful seasons, and leads his alma mater, mater, Michigan, to a 15-0 perfect season, capping off a national championship win, uh, bringing glory back to his former school. That's exactly what he came to do, and now he leaves. Now, he can leave, the theory he leaves for a couple reasons, right? One One of them, and most obviously, the fact that sanctions are coming his way in the in the NCAA. We've already seen one sanction fall down on him and that was for just a recruiting violation, nothing to do with other stuff that could have happened during his tenure at Michigan. Flees to the NFL for that. The other thing is he accomplished his goal at Michigan and the NFL has been trying to lure him back for at least the last 3 years. The Chargers are the team to finally do that. The Chargers are in an interesting spot. Right, Because when the Chargers go in and they bring Jim Harbaugh in, it's a team that's half built for success and a team that is half in shambles. The half that's built for success, obviously, Justin Herbert. One of the best quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion, top, definitely top 10, scratching the top 5 there uh, for, for quarterbacks in the league, Justin Herbert is. And that is the hardest piece of the puzzle to get. So that's... One check off the box right there for Jim Harbaugh, what he needs to do. He has a quarterback of the future. The question is the rest of the roster. It was extremely over the cap, and it was was helped a little bit by both Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack taking a little bit of a pay cut to try and help rebuild this team, but they lose all of their offensive weapons for lack of uh, sugarcoating it here, right? Keenan Allen... Uh, they can't re-sign. Uh, they trade him away to the Bears for pennies on the dollar. They release Mike Williams uh, to stay under the cap. The Austin Eckler walks in free agency, signs with Washington. This is a team that went from having one of the best skill position groups in the league, not to mention losing Gerald Everett as well, a really undervalued weapon at tight end, to having potentially the worst group of skill positions in the league. As far as wide receivers go, they're led by Josh Palmer, a guy that 
I personally am a big fan of. I love Josh Palmer. I love what his what he can do as a separator. We've seen him have really good success with this team. Qu- uh, Quinton Johnson, who extremely disappointing r- rookie season, but that doesn't mean he can't turn it around. Uh, you draft Lad McConkey, Lad, Lad McConkey, uh, Brendan Rice as well. Two rookies there. This is a Chargers team that is not really set up very well as far as their depth chart goes. When it comes to running backs, it's interesting because they replace Austin Eckler with a couple of rookies, but as as well as a couple of former Baltimore running Baltimore running backs in Gus and J.K. Dobbins. Uh, right now, Gus Edwards is listed as the starter in on the depth chart, which, I mean, he's fine, but he doesn't do anything special, especially in the pass game. And we know that Jim Harbaugh loves to run the ball. That's what he does everywhere. Frank Gore in, in uh, San Francisco. Obviously, the whole thing in Michigan. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Wherever he goes, that's his philosophy. Hard-nosed football, win the game. Defense and the running game, right? And the Chargers need a lot of work. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and say that 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 they figured it out, right? The Chargers need a lot of work to get to the spot where they where they want to be in the future, right? This is a Chargers team that lost boatloads of talents over the off season. So, where do they start? Obviously, bringing in Jim Harbaugh is the big, excuse me, is the big move of the off season. But also with the draft, they had the fifth overall picked, fifth overall pick in this draft. They end up picking Joe Alt, probably the best uh, offensive lineman in this class, a guy that I was really high on heading into it. Uh, but they they end up drafting. Joe Alt with the fifth overall pick out of Notre Dame. He's a transcendent offensive line talent. He should immediately shore up that offensive line. Uh, paired with Rashawn Slater, who they got just a couple uh, draft, drafts ago, Trey Pip- Pipkins looked pretty solid. Wasn't the greatest, but this offensive line, especially at the tackles, should be a really, really important part of this Chargers run game, right? Then they go out and fix receiver. They pick up Lad McConkey. They pick up Brendan Rice in the seventh round. They draft linebacker Junior Colson out of Michigan, as well as uh, defensive lineman Justin uh, Ibojibi out of Alabama. Those are two guys that should have immediate impacts on a defense that isn't really built. That is isn't really that built up, right? Uh, outside of you know your edge rushers in Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack and Derwin James at safety. There isn't anyone out there on this roster uh, that, that I go down and I look at, Hey, he's going to be a huge part of a, of a great defensive unit. Now, Derwin James is a great piece. He has not been able to stay healthy and they lost a lot of their cornerback upside there. Uh, You know, one of their big free agent signings was Kristen Fulton. Kristen Fulton, who isn't one of those elite corners, but is 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 a piece of much needed depth for this team. This defense is going to be bad. It's not going to be a very good defense. There's really no way of putting it otherwise. If they can get some pressure off the edge, maybe they can make it easier on their corners, but I do expect this defense to, to not be very good. And that's not going to be good with the play style of a Jim Harbaugh. Because Jim Harbaugh, like we talked about, likes to run the ball. Now, he does have Justin Herbert, so he can pass the ball when needed. That's not going to be an issue. But it's not his philosophy. Running the ball takes a lot of clock. And when you have a bad defense and you need the clock for shootouts, it's not a great situation to be in. So I'm not too excited about this Chargers offseason season. But it's not really their fault. They got put in this position because they thought they were in a championship window and they had bad injury luck and nothing really worked out. So it's a full rebuild. They went 5-12 and last year. They bring in a new coach, a much better coach, an established coach, someone that we know can be that guy. We'll see how much of a difference that is going to make. I'm going to give the Chargers a C. I'm going to give the Chargers a D plus. Again, they lo- just lost so much talent. And I understand it's not their fault, but bringing in Jim Harbaugh should bring a quick rebuild with him. He's going to bring not just uh, you know the ability, not just a 
competent coaching staff, but the ability to bring in free agents because he has that reputation that guys will want to play for. Uh, so that should help them in recruiting or signing free agents in the future. But anyway. Let me know what you think. We're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're going to go over all 18 weeks, all 17 games of the Los Angeles Chargers schedule, give them a record prediction, see if they can beat out that six, that, that five and 12 record from last season. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you were just tuning in, we just went over the Los Angeles Chargers offseason. A disappointing offseason, but one where you can see the light. They brought in new head coach Jim Harbaugh. I did give them a D plus just because they lost so much talent, unfortunately. And the draft outside of Joe Alt, which was a slam dunk of a pick, didn't really move me that much. In this segment, we're going to go over the Chargers schedule. All 18 weeks, all 17 games, give them a record prediction, see if they can improve on the 5-12 and 12 record from last year, and maybe make the playoffs. We'll see about that. But before we do, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net, or if you are on YouTube, you can use that super chat option. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to get into the Los Angeles Chargers schedule prediction. Like we talked about with the Chiefs, this is going to be a slightly harder schedule for everyone else in the division outside of the Chiefs. The Chiefs, just first of all, got better. Second of all, they have to play the AFC North. Not a tough, not an easy division to play at all. Uh, but if there is a team that I think can do it, it's going to be in, in this division. If there's a team out the Broncos, Raiders, and Chargers that I think can put up the biggest fight, I think it might be the Chargers. Now, that's not to say that they're going to come second in that division. I just think they have the highest ceiling, mostly because of Justin Herbert. Now, we're going to put their ceiling any... We're going we're gonna to put their range of wins uh, at the end here, but this is a team that has upside. This is a team that could surprise people. I don't think they will, but this is a team that has some upside here. They have an earlier bye week, week five. That's the first bye week you possibly can. And, you know, bye week does matter when you're talking about a team, especially a team on any of the coasts that has to travel a lot. It it It's important to have a good bye week time. But for a team that isn't expected to do much, this shouldn't matter that badly. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, the Chargers here start off their campaign week one against the Las Vegas Raiders at home in the uh, in L.A. I think the Chargers win this game. New head coach. Generally, you win your first game with a new head coach. I know that isn't always how it happens, but I think Jim Harbaugh is going to light a fire under these guys. And I believe in their ability to win week one. Against the Raiders, a tough division, a tough division matchup for him. Week two against the Panthers on the road. And this is one where I think really could go either way. I gave the Panthers a win on this one. I think the Panthers, uh, their first home game of the season, I think is something that they're going to come out and just have have more energy than the Chargers are. And they're going to win this game. Then they get a tough defense week three against the Steelers. They play uh, on the road in Pittsburgh. I think that defense is going to be too much for them, uh, although I do think that this is, again, going to be a close game. I think the Chargers are going to be one of those teams that just plays a bunch of really, really tight games all season long. Week four against the Chiefs. They're going to lose that one. Uh, I think the Chiefs are going to dominate the division. They're gonna not, that's not a pattern that's going to stop 
this season, I don't think. Then they get a bye. One and three entering the bye in week five. They take on the Broncos on the road. And the Broncos are a team that I'm very low on. But this is a division matchup. It is in Denver. And because of that, I'm going to give the Broncos a win. They fall to one and four. Week seven against the Arizona Cardinals. Again, this is this is a matchup that I really do think could go either way. I'm giving this one to the Cardinals, though. The Chargers fall to one and five. Then they take on the Saints. Yet again, another matchup that could go either way here. I am giving this to Derek Carr and the Saints. They, they once again fall to one and six. Halfway through the season here, one and six on the year. Not a great spot to be in, but it's not super surprising. Then they take on the Browns, another tough defense. And I think this defense is going to be too much for that offensive line to handle. Uh, the Browns win this game as well. Chargers fall to one and seven. It's a seven-game losing streak for them with a bye sandwiched in between. They take on the Titans, another team that I think could go either way. You're sensing a pattern here. This is a Chargers team that I think if they come out with enough energy could win probably half of the games that they lose. But I'm giving this game to the Titans as well. So it, so an eight-game losing streak here as we head into Week 11 against the Bengals. Uh, they're 1-8 and eight on the season. Not a good spot to be in. I do think they beat the Bengals, though. This is a team that could surprise anybody. I don't think there's a single game that they... I don't think there's a single game on the schedule. Maybe a couple. There's a couple. There's, there's only a few handful of games on their schedule that I don't think they have a shot in the dark in. And one of those is coming up against the Ravens. Uh, this is a Ravens team that's going to play a similar style of football. It's going to be Battle of the Harbaugh Brothers. This should be a fun game to watch. I am giving this one to the Ravens, though. Uh, then they take on the Falcons in Atlanta. Kirk Cousins and that revamped defense that they just got, I'm giving this one to the Falcons here today. Uh Sorry, I'm giving, excuse me, I am giving the Chargers a win against the Falcons, though. So, I do, I, like I said, this is one that could go either way. I was looking ahead to the next game against the Chiefs, which on the road in Arrowhead, end of the season, I don't see them winning that game at all. Then they get the, then they get the Buccaneers at home. I think they do win this game. The Buccaneers are, an, are one of those teams that, I think could be could be a very similar level to the uh, to the Chargers as far as skill level here, but that's besides the point. They get the Broncos in week fifteen, week sixteen, excuse me, at home. They win this one. They're not getting swept by the Denver Broncos this season. Then they get the Patriots on the road in week seventeen. And I think Drake May will take care of business, win a game at home against the Chargers before closing off the season against the against the Raiders in Vegas. They need this one. They're going to get this one. They finish out at six and eleven. Now we kind of rush through this schedule here a little bit because I wanted to talk a little bit about how this is kind of a low estimation of them. There are a bunch of games that could go fifty fifty. I think this is a team that could go anywhere from 6 and 11 to all the way at their ceiling being like <clears throat> 10 and 7. This is a team that could compete for the playoffs if a bunch of the breaks fall their way. That's not to say that that's not to say that it's going to be easy for them. It's going to be very tough for them to get to that 10 and 7 mark, but it is possible. They have a great coaching staff. They have a great quarterback. And that is two-thirds of what you need to win NFL games right there. I do think that this is a team that's going to need just about two, just another year to get their, their, their bearing straight, get it figured out as far as being a serious playoff contender. But after this season, uh, I do think they will be in the running. For uh for a playoff spot, so I have them at six and eleven, but that could very very easily change uh in just you know a couple of a couple of games. Like I said, I think I could very easily see this team going eight and nine nine and eight as opposed to six and eleven. But ten wins, I think, is something that is. I think ten wins is even possible here. But I don't have them making the playoffs. I think they lose the tiebreaker out anyway, even if they get to those ten wins. But 
we'll see what happens with the Chargers. Their their season is going to be very unpredictable, I think. I think they're going to be like the Vikings of the last couple seasons playing a million close games. I'm not sure if we're going to get if they're going to get the breaks though cuz the Chargers tend not to get the breaks in close games. But we'll see if Jim Harbaugh can change that. But anyway, let me know what you think. We're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, it is time for our world-famous MLB Power Rankings, the official sports by GSMC Podcast Network MLB Power Rankings. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 